there was more of the same for the Miami Dolphins in their seventh consecutive loss, the 26-11 setback against the Buffalo Bills, but also some things we haven't seen very much this season. The new was the relentless pressure we saw the Dolphins applying on quarterback Josh Allen for the first half and maybe the early part of the third quarter. It's not that the Dolphins got a lot of sacks because they actually weren't credited with even one, but it was very obvious that they affected Josh Allen. The Dolphins sent extra rushers at Allen on a consistent basis because the four-man rush quite simply isn't getting it done, but whatever, it worked. The question, of course, is where has that been all season? The defense obviously couldn't sustain its elite performance the entire game, which is regrettable but somewhat understandable against an offense like Buffalo's, and the biggest issue was finding someone who could cover Cole Beasley. Buffalo's slot receiver just ate up the Dolphins, often against Nick Needham, to the tune of 10 catches for 110 yards. And that included some key third down conversions. Quite simply, he was the difference in the game. The Dolphins switched Needham out for Justin Coleman at some point, but the reality is that Needham is the better player and it didn't matter who was on him. And to anyone who would point the finger at the defense and talk about how it gave up 23 points in the second half and didn't get the job done, it says here a legitimate team would have been in a position to have taken control of the game in the first half when Miami held Buffalo to three points and five first downs. But it's pretty clear that the Dolphins' offense is far from legitimate these days and it got so bad at times Sunday that even lining up correctly was an issue. The play at the end of the first half that resulted in Mike Jasicki getting a shotgun snap into his chest and causing a fumble and three points lost was the stuff of football follies. Who's to blame for that? The offensive line, meanwhile, was ever so slightly better than it was in the first meeting against Buffalo, which is to say it was bad compared to horrible. And, while it's been easy to pile on Austin Jackson this season, he certainly wasn't the one who stood out for all the wrong reasons on this day. Rather, it was rookie second-round pick Liam Eichenberg and right guard Robert Hunt who really appeared to struggle. The final rushing numbers for the Dolphins were 23 carries for 68 yards, which doesn't even average out to 3 yards per carry. That's not winning football. For all those so quick to dump on Devontae Parker because he's so often injured, he showed again today that he's just a flat-out quality wide receiver. Yes, he did have the late drop, but he still came up big for the Dolphins and was easily the team's best player on this team. And we'll go ahead and save the hottest topic for last, and that's of course Tua Tungavailoa. While it's quite obvious this loss wasn't on him and he just doesn't get much help on offense, let's also not pretend that he doesn't ever play a part in the offense's shortcomings. That's just lazy. Yes, the offensive line struggles, but the inability to throw downfield, yes, we understand there was a 40-yard completion to Mike Jasicki on a fourth down play, is a major problem. As we've said before, Tungavailoa is not the biggest problem on this Dolphins team, but he's also limited enough that he needs everything around him working to elevate his play, when it's the other way around with truly elite quarterbacks. And, yes, that's where Deshaun Watson would make a difference. From a purely football standpoint, Watson is a clear and massive upgrade who might not single-handedly win games but also would make the offense more efficient. Lastly, for those who always pointed to Tua's record to justify his performance of 2020, you can't turn around and now say that the three consecutive losses don't mean anything because Tua has played well. It's one or the other, not both, and from this standpoint, the one-loss record is a team stat. And on that last note, the Dolphins' team's stat of one-loss record stinks. The Miami Dolphins figure to be mentioned often in trade speculation until the deadline arrives Tuesday afternoon. With only one day's remaining before the 2021 NFL trade deadline arrives, the Miami Dolphins will continue to find themselves in the news for the time being. That, of course, will include plenty of Deshaun Watson talk because, yes, that story very much is still alive. But we've already seen another prominent name mentioned, Devontae Parker, and it's entirely possible he won't be the only one. We'll start with Watson, of course, and the dueling report Sunday morning from ESPN's Adam Schefter and NFL Network's Ian Rapoport suggesting that the Dolphins remain the only team with a chance to land Watson in a trade but with Houston more than willing to hang on to Watson until the offseason. Reflecting something we have suggested all along, Schefter reported that Texans owner Cal McNair would prefer to see Watson gone by the trade deadline, Tuesday at 4 p.m., but Schefter added that McNair ultimately will leave the decision up to general manager Nick Casario. While it's certainly possible that the Texans will keep Watson for the rest of the 2021 season, it wouldn't be the first time an organization did this kind of posturing before pulling off a major trade. 
From the outside, it certainly looks like a poker game between the Dolphins and Texans to see what kind of agreement can be reached between the two organizations because it sure appears both sides want to make it happen. While Dolphins head coach Brian Flores did say, actually, it was more like he agreed with the statement that Tua Tungavailoa would be his starting quarterback for the rest of the 2021 season barring injury, this wasn't the same as him saying it outright. And saying, Tua is our quarterback, doesn't end the conversation because it's something that can be said all the way until the time when he's not the Dolphins' quarterback. Kind of like Cliff Kingsbury did when he said during the 2019 offseason that Josh is our guy, before the Arizona Cardinals drafted Kyler Murray with the first overall pick and then traded Rosen to the Dolphins. Let's also understand that the Dolphins have declined all along to say the sentence that would have shut down all the speculation. That sentence is, we will not be trading for a quarterback in 2021. And the reason Flores hasn't done that, or Stephen Ross didn't do that when he shut down any attempt at a comment at the owners' meeting last week, is clearly because the Dolphins still are interested in Watson. The Dolphins, however, want to strike the best deal possible to get the embattled quarterback, while the Texans obviously want to get as much for him as they can. The suspense will end at the absolute latest Tuesday at 4 p.m.